again and welcome to Newgrange. We're now around, obviously, at the front of the monument where I'm joined by Dr. Frank Prendergast from DIT and UCD. He's an expert in astronomy and solar alignments and landscape. Tell me, Frank, what do we know about this environment here and the solar alignment that's evolved here? Interestingly, Newgrange, which is probably the largest passage tomb in Ireland and certainly Europe, being 90 metres in diameter and 10 metres high, has some very special features which incorporate the passage and the roof box. And the phenomenon is that at the period of the winter solstice, the sun rising on the horizon behind me penetrates into the chamber and illuminates uh, the floor of the chamber inside. Now that's a really special phenomenon which does not occur in many of the passage tombs. Interestingly, of the 220 tombs in Ireland, only about half of them have passages surviving. And of those, only about 10 to 15%, a very small number, are astronomically aligned. And we know that from analysis of these sites, the alignment and interest was on the horizon and the sunrise, particularly at the winter sunrise and sunset. There are a few summer solstices as well. So the period of winter solstice, which is the time of year when the sun slowly and inexorably moves along the horizon and stops for about a period of about three to four or five days, to the naked eye that is, um, was targeted by these prehistoric people. And it is the shortest day of the year, it is the turning point of the year, and for many, even now, uh, even though we're 5,000 years afterwards, it holds a special symbolism in terms of the meaning of that time of year, just like Christmas, which only follows a few days later. So for many, it is the time of year when renewal starts and we look forward to spring. So that is the excitement of the solstice and the significance of it. The, the winter solstice, I mean, what significance does that have, do you think, in, for a prehistoric man around this time? Around this time, you have um, a symbolic date, a symbolic part of the year. You have survived or are in the middle of the winter. You've gathered the crops. Um, you are now basically surviving and living in a landscape which would have been very harsh at that time in terms of the, the, the climate would have been tough in any winter. So ritually, people observed turning points in the year to mark their time of year and I suppose to, to, uh, to commune with the dead. Uh, these tombs, part of their function was ritual, it was death, it was burial, but they meant much more than that and their strategic placement in the landscape uh, reveals an awful lot about the way in which people thought and acted. And they, they built these megalithic tombs, of which we have quite a number surviving, such that they are on high ground, typically for the passage tombs, they are intervisible with each other. So there's an awful lot more going on than merely the uh, function of the tomb as a placement or a, a repository for cremated remains. And what's interesting about the astronomy of the site is that the tilt of the Earth's axis over time, over thousands of years, has changed slightly. And that means that where the sun rises today isn't quite exactly where it rose 5,000 years ago. It was a little further to the south, about two solar diameters. That's quite significant. Nonetheless, the passage and the width of the passage and the roof box in Newgrange are sufficiently wide to allow that same phenomenon to occur even today. And that will go on happening for quite another few millennia. Does that mean eventually, though, the miracle of, of Newgrange will at one time will, will stop? Yeah, you're spot on there, Richard, because um, with uh, the known tilt and change of tilt in the Earth's axis and the narrowness, this is the key, the narrowness of the passage, and the roof box itself, there will come a time, predicted, we can predict that uh, quite mathematically, uh, uh, very predictably, very precise, uh, that the drift of the sun, millennia on millennia, will move northwards. And gradually, I predict about say 7,000 years from now, uh, we have it all worked out, that there will come a time when the new Grange phenomenon will no longer work for a period of time. And then the turning point in that cycle of the Earth's tilt change will happen then the sun will drift back again and then way into the future the sun will return inevitably to its former position where it once was in the Neolithic itself. So these cycles are going on but of course our ancient ancestors knew nothing of that and it wasn't important to them.